I, it's like six hours of Helmuth just berating Carrying. everyone and being being like. Just, being I think himself. he's like he's. I think he's the funniest guy alive. I really do. <laughs> um, he's so funny and he's hilarious. Like he's great to be around. He's really. He's like whatever. It, anyways, he he keeps telling people this one stat, which is like. He's, he's 28 for 28 in his last cash game sessions on okay. winning. And he keeps mentioning that. And then he loses a couple of pots and he goes off. And he's just like yelling at everyone. He's like, I'm the greatest. You, <laughs> you guys are so lucky that like you keep getting there, blah, blah, blah. And then he looks at Dan Smith, who just sat down, and he's like, realizes Dan doesn't know the stat yet. <laughs> and he's like, Dan, 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 did I tell you I'm 28 out of 28? And I just start howling, and I'm like high pitched, like squealing, laughing for like three and a half minutes, and the the chat's like making fun of me, like Jesse's lost it, like he's completely deranged. Me and my buddy, we make it all of this money. Yeah, I know it's rude to be bragging. They never catching a slack. Me and my buddy, we working hard. All right, guys, money. welcome back. Table One Podcast here. Justin Young, Art Parman. These are the guys, but today the main guy, Jesse Sylvia, longtime friend, longtime poker player. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? Eh, you know, got a red solo cup in front of me. Uh, I don't have Dr Pepper in it, but I hear it is flowing for some people. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite good. <laughs> you ever I'm had actually... a uh, flaming Dr Pepper? You know what that is? No, I've read about it and I've always wanted to try one. I haven't been at a bar where they're like, we got flaming Dr. Pepper. Well, I, I don't think anyone advertises it. So you just got to order it. Yeah, I think it. you just say it and I hope the bartender knows what it, what it means or whatever. But yeah, it's, it's one of those cocktails that tastes like talk, Dr. Pepper, but like has nothing to do with, like, there's no Dr. Pepper in it. It's 23 other flavors. Yeah, it's, it's literally just a bunch of liquor and they set it on fire to give it like some kind of like sweet like taste or whatever and it just tastes like Dr. Pepper. I don't know. I just realized, and I should have realized this years ago, but... Should have just like asked you to be my alcohol guru at some point, because <laughs> I have a lot of little things like that that I've been probably punting really hard at. That I, I mean, that, that could have been useful probably when you were 24 years old. I don't know how useful it is for you now. What are you like 37 right now? I am 37. Wow, someone did the research. <laughs> I mean, I still want to try it, so I think no, no, like it, it, it's definitely worth it. It's kind of like the Long Island, Long Island iced tea. Yeah. Where it's just like all liquor and then like a what like a splash of coke and somehow it tastes a little bit like iced tea. Granted, not a lot like it, but it tastes <laughs> like you're drinking not alcohol. I think. It's yeah, exactly. That's the point. Yeah. You feel it soon. <laughs> yeah, it's uh... so basically every drink that's ruined my life for a couple of months. Yeah, yeah, mostly sugar and alcohol, and then uh, yeah, and then a, a day off the next day if you're uh, if you're a poker player. <laughs> We've. Uh, We've known each other a long time, uh, as long, almost as long as Justin and I have known each other. But, but where, where did you come from, Jesse Sylvia? Where the people need to know. Where, wait, fuck! I do know where you're, you're from. Oh come on! I even know this. You are from Martha's Vineyard, That's right. which I don't know where that is though. <laughs> wait, you, do you at least know the state? Uh, I'm I'm conflicted it's between right, two, yeah. and they're opposites. It might be Cape Cod. I, oh, I don't know where he's from. I was gonna say California. Or New Jersey. <laughs> Those are my two options. So you guys are really close friends. I, I like it. Yeah, best friends, some would say. <laughs> All right, so two things. One, it's neither of those. Um, two, there's actually a really cool story that I learned in high school. We had to take a, like a history class about the island that I'm from. And they had a time period where they used to have, I forget what it was, like one vote in Senate or like one representative for just the islands in the Senate. Um, or the house, I, sorry. Um, I and they lost that political power when they like restructured how they were going to do it in Massachusetts and it became like Cape and the Islands, So they had less power. And so the islands were like, this is BS. We're seceding. And they tried to leave Massachusetts and a bunch of different States tried to pick them up. And there were like some that were like Jersey or whatever. And then by the way, it's Massachusetts. So it's like the close States wanted us. And then California wanted us. South Dakota wanted us. What? They were flirting with all these states. And then eventually Massachusetts was like, you can't do this, dude. And then it was shut down. But Dude, that's like, kind of cool, though. What year was this? Do you remember? Like, were, you were alive like, or was something No, it was like 60s or something oh, that's like that. that's still really fucking cool. Right. Yeah, isn't that wild? Yeah. Like, so you kind of learn about it. You're like, oh, like... You could do that, and then you realize, like, no, you really couldn't do that because Mass was just like, no, you're not, you're not doing that. But it would have been cool to like be part of California and be on the other coast. Yeah, or like your own Puerto Rico up yeah. in the up in the Northeast. Yeah. 
Like, I just like the idea of drawing the states in California. It has, like, this little arrow, like, yeah. going around. To... <laughs> All the same color. This is one of our islands. Hold on. We're going up around Canada for this line. Yeah. All right. So you're from an, you're from an island. Let's call it uh, Hawaii. Like, what? Hawaii you going to tell us or just keep it a secret for Martha's Vineyard? Martha's Vineyard. I thought you said I it. Didn't, didn't no, we all just say that? were wrong. I guess California or. Uh, oh, no, Jersey. I guess the state, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, the state. Yeah, yeah. Mar- okay. Just, yeah, yeah. Told us why. No, you really nailed it. I was just messing with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually did think that was in California. So, so tell us. Like, so, uh, kind, of, kind of our uh, main theme in this is kind of trying to figure out how people lead a normal life and then all of a sudden jump into this life the yeah, gambling fair. life like even more than like the poker life like the the life in in vegas i'd say so i think it was easier for me because i i didn't ever really have a normal life and also like where i'm from a lot of people don't have normal lives so it's like a very seasonal place um it's like crazy in the summer there's tons of people there there's tons of stuff going on and then the winter uh everything shuts down like restaurants all the tourists leave and it's very quiet um so what ends up happening is people make all of their money between the months of, let's say, May and September for mm-hmm. a lot of people. Like they work in restaurants or whatever. Sure. Uh, and then they have the whole winter and some people pick up side work. Some people work year-round jobs. Um, but a lot of people just work really hard, make a bunch of money, and then go traveling in the winter. Usually like Central or South America somewhere that where they can backpack more affordably. Um, so it was like I already kind of was brought up with this idea of how you could go about life in a very different way than most people do. Um, so the poker, poker lifestyle never seemed as ridiculous or weird to me as other people. Maybe you had no mad in your brain already. Yeah. Ready to to travel the world. Uh, When I, when I moved to Vegas, I was living in Argentina with three of my friends, four of my friends, but three were in a band together and they were (laughs) trying to like make it in music in Argentina. And my buddy, Mike Del Vecchio called me and was like, I want to move to Vegas. And I was like, all right, well, if you get an apartment that's furnished, because I don't have any furniture out there, like, I'll just fly from here to there. And so, yeah, I was like very nomadic. At that so you were just living in Argentina, and then, and then Mike was like, I'm moving there, and yeah. you want to be roomies? Yeah. <laughs> so what, what, what year was this? That was uh, the very beginning of 2011. Okay. I, think, I think I moved there like February or March or something. And were you already like online pokering down there? Or like yeah. how you were... That, so you're already into it. That was how you were making all your money, or you just had? Were you the summer job kind of guy, and you had gone down there with your summer money, or what? What's what's the deal <laughs> with the, with that? No, I was by then I was playing poker. All right, so I'll start. Um, so in high school, I see Money Maker win the main event. I'm like, wow, poker's really cool. Because um, until then, all I knew about poker was like from the movie Rounders, and I thought people just stared into each other's souls. And I watched the main event. I was like, oh, there's like math behind this and stuff. I can, I can get behind that. Like I could figure that out. I don't, I don't stare into souls very well. Yeah. Uh, so, so then I go to college. Um, and I w- actually, ironically, the story earlier, I went to college in California. Um, and there's a bunch of 18 up casinos there. Oh, okay. So mm-hmm. I immediately started playing poker at the casinos and started playing online once I realized they took a debit card online and, <laughs> yeah. and like played in college for four years. Um, Ran pretty hot in tournaments in college, made some money. And then I was like, okay, well, I, at the time I was dating this girl who was going to Boston University. I just started dating her, so I was moving to Boston. And I was like, all right, well, you know, I, I'm doing pretty well at this thing. And I was just going to get, like, some random job and try to write because I want to be a writer. I was like, well, why don't I just play poker instead? So I just did that for a while. Um, realized quickly, like, oh, I'm never I, – I think I chopped the Sunday Million online in college. And so I was like, was I'm never going to run. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was massive. It was like 5,000 people. Yeah. And I was like, I'm never going to run this good again. So like, I got to play cash games now. So I started learning cash in Boston. Okay. And then eventually somewhere I moved, I moved with my friends to Argentina. So you got your degree though. And then. Uh, oh. Almost. Okay. <laughs> Where'd you go to school and what'd you go to school for? Um, I went to California Lutheran University. Um, I studied math and psychology and uh, I have one class left. And you have no desire to go back or like get it filled? Uh, I, would, I would do it online, um, but I've just never really been asked for a diploma. <laughs> so I Sure, I didn't know if it was like a personal goal at one point where you can just... I'd like to do it to uh, make my parents happy. There you go, yeah. But, um, I mean, I'd like to do it for myself too, but I, I think it would make my parents really happy. But uh, unfortunately, so when I final table the main event, I did this interview with my old school newspaper and, or magazine or whatever it is, and I, I told the guy like off the record that I was 
because he was like, I noticed you have one class left. And I was like, yeah, I was thinking about um, getting one of those like $4 an hour interns in like India and having him do the class. Jeez. And he printed that in the article. <laughs> that is fantastic. So, so uh, now I'm like, oh, I can't do that. I, I want to find take that article so yeah. bad. <laughs> so now I can't do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you got to actually do the class now. Yeah. You can't get the... <laughs> Which is like a lot of work. I got to do a whole class. That, yeah, that sounds like a lot of work. I mean, I only did a three semesters myself, so and we're same age, so I was same same thing for me. Moneymaker boom, and uh, I didn't see rounders till after after I saw that. Oh wow! And okay. then uh, yeah, and then I was like, yeah, this is cool. I don't have to. I can just play a game. I don't have to work. <laughs> when I saw rounders, that changed my whole world because I didn't know you could make a living off of a game. <laughs> like I thought you could make a living off sports, obviously, but I'm five foot seven. Yeah, Barely. there's no money in limbo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and they're all they're all like four foot. I'm I'm the, I'm the wrong height in every sport. You're too average. Be, yeah, be something extreme. <laughs> yep, I blew it. Oh well, that's life in the big city. <laughs> okay, so you uh, you moved to Boston. You actually did move to Boston after after chasing a girl. College. Chasing a girl. Yeah. I guess it didn't work out, huh? Yeah, we broke up pretty quickly. Yeah, do you want to tell me why? Was it your fault? Her fault? No, you I think online poker. Yeah, actually, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's it's good to find out that way. Yeah. If it's going to be your whole life, you know, it might as well. <laughs> Just cheating on her with the uh, checker raising, huh? Sometimes somebody gives you an ultimatum and they think you're going to pick them, but you're like, <laughs> I'll pick gambling. <laughs> you know. All right. So after that, you, stuff out here. <laughs> you, you made a bunch of. That was where you chopped the Sunday Million in Boston. No, I was in California at school. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. At the time, yeah, I. Uh, it was like one of my last semesters. I remember it vividly because I didn't have a working computer, so I was playing in the library. Nice. And then the library was closing, and I had to run to the math lab because I used to tutor in the math lab, so I knew how to like get in. I knew where the key was hidden. Wow! wow. Missed, and like, I played till like two a.m. You like you dodged. Yeah, yeah, I dodged the cool. Yeah. And got to got to chop. Yeah, I looked in the hand history. I had like aces versus kings. Oh, come on. That lost. <laughs> but no. Oh, that's great. All right, and then uh, and then you found yourself in Argentina, and then slowly into Vegas after that. Yeah. And then... Uh, so you mentioned something about the main event of a World Series of Poker. Is that a, is that a common thing here in Vegas? They, it's, you know, it's, it wasn't a common thing until about 1960. <laughs> oh, and okay, then, okay. Well, yeah, I was, I'm a little older than you, so like I, I, I don't remember, you know, I just remember, remember the older days where, you know... He doesn't remember last week. <laughs> when did you move here? Uh, I got here in 2007. So uh, oh, nice. just just a handful of years before you. Yeah, you saw some pretty cool stuff between those years. It, it was it was weird. Like I uh, when I moved here, I was young and liked to drink, but outside of that, I didn't party. I didn't go to like raves or like clubs or anything like that. So it was really hard for me to find friends. Like I actually oh. hated Vegas for like the first year and a half until I met some uh, good friends. It was like everyone either wanted to go clubbing and do all the drugs and go to the strip club, or they just wanted to go to bed at nine o'clock. Yeah. And it was really hard to no like find between. anyone in between until like I met like Shannon Chore and Eric Baldwin, those those kind oh, of guys. Those and, are great guys. Yeah. Though. And like it, it was great. It's like, oh, people actually just like having like grilling a burger and having a beer. Oh, this is this is great. Come on, nobody wants to do fifteen shots in my garage on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that, the in between? Yeah, that was uh, that was an extreme. Thank you. Shout out Nick Howard, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, if you guys haven't seen that episode, shot taking with Nick Howard. Uh, it's, Art, it's Art, okay Art, Art did a great job editing, I will say that. <laughs> not that I remember exactly what happened the last 15 minutes, but... Uh, yeah, there's a lot in there that, that could not make the final cut. <laughs> that, was, that was a fun editing session, wasn't it? It was... It was it <laughs> oh, can't keep that. I can't understand can't that. that. <laughs> Don't know yeah. what that means. Can't say that on television. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So, for those watching that don't know, Jesse's final table, the main event. How was that run? Was that, like, the coolest shit ever? Or yes. What? Yeah? Yeah. Just Completely. Because you remember, get to invite everyone out. Yeah, but I remember right before that tournament, it was like a, we, were, we were playing in the same games, like the 10-20 no limit, 5-10 no limit, like in between those two. And, and I feel like you were, like, really close to just quitting poker at that point, weren't you? You were, like, you were down swinging. Like, every time I saw you, you were, like, crazy maniac mode and you were just like swinging huge every time every spot that you were in was i, I was like jesus really see what happened to you you don't remember <laughs> i don't remember um, that at all i thought it was very consistent and, and level-headed no man you were a fucking maniac when, when we would play 10 20 together and then uh, i definitely went for it a bit yeah and then 
Yeah, I don't know. You were, uh, what, what year was that that you? 2012. 2012. Yeah. Wow, that was right the fucking way. Never mind. You weren't about to quit poker. You just got here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, know, you still might have been playing like a maniac. That because I actually, so I always wanted to, to work in, in, I guess, Hollywood, like film. I wanted to like write scripts. Yeah. And uh, so I always kind of said to Ashley that next year we'll live in L.A. because she was pursuing dance. She went to college for dance. And I would go to school for film. And uh, so it wasn't like I was going to quit. Like I was going to play poker in L.A., but I had a very different trajectory figured out. Okay. So you're not wrong about that. Well, that was also uh, 2011, 2012. That was the Black Friday, right? That was around then. So all the online shit went away and uh that was earlier that uh that was 11 right that was actually right when i moved to vegas in 2010 <laughs> yeah i was gonna yeah. say it was 11 or 12 for sure. yeah, yeah. Like lucky to be here but also like now you can't play online <laughs> yeah it kind of sucked in that sense but it was it was cool because it forced me to just play live and i feel like that was good for me for a lot of reasons like not the least of which is like when you guys know you play enough live poker like you learn how to you become very social you learn how to like deal with any type of human being on the planet yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of different humans that play yeah, poker. Yeah, definitely. Poker is a great equalizer. You yeah. <laughs> definitely play with all types and all, all lanes, all, that's for sure. Sorry, yeah. I was going to use some other words. But either way. Um, but I love that. I love that. No, I agree. I feel like we're more equipped to deal with like any odd social situation or whatever. Yeah, and that's no, true. Nothing, nothing brings that out like the main event, too. Like uh, <laughs> when you're in there, oh, you, yeah. you can, at the end of the whole thing, you, you still have like a lot of those characters in, but a lot of them have been eliminated yeah, because yeah. they're fucking wild. Yeah. But, uh, but no, that year, uh, take us back. Bring us, uh, bring us to the final table with you. Oh, let's start a little <laughs> early. I'm just more curious. Like, how many main events have you played before this? Any? Uh, one. One. So this yeah. is your second every time? Yep. All right. Like, just, you don't have to go through every single day or anything, but, like, were, do you, were you ever in trouble? Did you ever get super lucky? Like, obviously, you got lucky on, like, day four, day five, Yeah, I got, six, I mean, I got very, like, very lucky. I know how you play. You, yeah. Obviously, you had to get lucky. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's very easy. <laughs> but, I mean, like, on day um, one, did you, like, were you, like, sweating or you were just, like, uh, just, just want to cruise through? No, it was pretty smooth sailing. Um, I, I actually kept it really low variance day one because I was extremely aware of, like, how soft it is on the first day. Smart. And I ran pretty hot like with card distribution i think i bagged like a few starting stacks and i was pretty this is back when they had like 30k starting stacks you think yeah or... i think so okay. yeah that sounds right um so I, I i think i bagged like maybe i bagged like two and a half and then day two i um remember i like had some bluff picked off and had some other stuff go wrong and i that was when i started thinking like oh this might not be smooth sailing and then and then i just uh got moved to another table with with gus hansen oh. and gus just like, he just played absurd. Like, he, I mean, he's playing a 10K and he plays like million dollar cash games, so he didn't really care, but he was just like, you know, going for it in every spot. And I just had a lot of hands and I just ended up bagging heaps again. And then I think like day three, I bagged heaps. I, I just remember like it was pretty smooth sailing until day, almost like day seven. And then day seven, I played, well, first of all, day seven, I played terribly. Um, I was just exhausted. How many people are left when you start day seven? 27. Oh, I'm just nose right off the bat. There you go. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. Like, I ran really hot. It was just smooth sailing in terms, like, I wasn't at risk to... Oh, no, I'm sorry. On day five or six, uh, I was all in one time. I, I um, This guy at the table was playing pretty wild, and I was playing pretty wild, and... Uh, it was like, remember back in those days, we'd have like five bet, like yeah, six yeah. bet wars. You, you're Last supposed to five bet the queen jack offsuit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you're, that's what you're supposed yeah. to do. Last guy to shove is the guy who wins the yeah, hand yeah. or whatever. Last aggressive. <laughs> Nowadays, Two big it, blinds, four big blinds. Yeah. Seven big blinds. And then somebody would make it nine and, like, and you'd fold like king queen suited right, inexplicably. Yeah, it was right. ridiculous. Yeah, we had, um, uh, we had some guy at the table who was like, I, I thought we were in a clicking war. Maybe he just had it, but uh, I end up I end up putting in a hundred bigs blind versus blind with ace three suited, and he had kings, and I just like flopped an ace. <laughs> so I'm glad you remember that. Oh, I definitely remember that. The best was I saw him like the next year. He's like, my friends always make fun of me about that. I was like, your friends make fun of you about that. <laughs> um, you could have got second place in the main event. Yeah, <laughs> idiot. Kings. So. I, I like, but it was pretty. Other than that hand, it was pretty smooth sailing. Um, I guess when you win a hundred big blinds in that spot, it's going to be smooth sailing. But it's pretty smooth sailing to like day seven, and then day seven, I played bad. I ran pretty bad, and I was down to like thirty bigs on dinner. I remember going out to dinner with like some friends, um, 
And I was like, I need to run hot. And I just came back and ran so hot for like five <laughs> hours and like bag chip lead and was like, okay. Oh, hell yeah. So it was, it. yeah, it was, it was, that was my experience with it. Most of it was just trying to sleep and not being able to sleep yeah. every night. Were you staying at the Rio or were you, uh. No, I had my apartment. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. You're, you're, you're still staying with Del Vecchio or no? Yeah. We're at Panorama Towers okay. at the time. So it was easy to. Yeah. yeah that's quick commute. That's yeah. nice. All right. So coming to the final table, tell me, tell me some other people that are, I know, but like for the fans, like tell, tell them uh, some other people that were there that would know. Well, all right. So we had one of your favorite human beings. I'm guessing Jeremy Osmus was there. I, I've cool. heard of him. Love, yes. Love Jeremy. Dude. Very good looking. I just don't yeah. like to be around him in public or with other people looking at both yeah. of us. <laughs> like when I think I'm good at something, I don't want to talk to Jeremy Osmus. Yeah. When when I'm already crushed inside, then I can talk to him. Then it doesn't much matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I agree with all of that. <laughs> um, he was there. Uh, so my, my one of my best friends in poker, Russell Thomas, was there. Oh yeah. And him and I actually swapped three percent before the tournament began. Wait, before the tournament, yeah. you both made the final table. I did not know that. Yeah. That's cool as shit. <laughs> oh, I have a really good story too. Um, Del Vecchio showered both of us on a swap, <laughs> <laughs> which like I wouldn't have told like eight years ago, but he's he's chilling now. He's done very well in poker. And he's fun. <laughs> But yeah, he w the first couple of years after he wasn't thrilled about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, punishment. If he doesn't believe in you, he doesn't believe in you. That's right. You know. Well, um, and he actually, I said something about somebody torching it, and Mike made some joke in like a group chat recently about like sounds like your main event final table, and I I had some like retort like uh, oh that one you didn't swap with me in or something. <laughs> it's like I always have that in the back pocket when he, I don't know. Anyways. Um, who else is there? Oh, Greg Merson, who won it, who's like an insanely good poker player, especially at the yes. time. He was like very, very good. Uh, he was crushing there. I remember uh, he won a, the six handed event. I think it was the five, it was a 10K six handed event. And like, I swear to God, I had a buddy at the final table, Shannon. Yeah. It, it, he he, he won that, that table, the night know. before he played the main. Yeah, that's right. He yeah. won back to back bracelets, one of them being the main. Yeah. That's so that's insane. Keith Lear was there yeah. too at that table. It was, it was a sick final table. That was fun. Exactly. Yeah. You know what's actually funny? I saw the hand that he won against Keith Lear, and that was part of why I called off light at the time. Um, really? My final hand against Greg. Yeah, he, uh, he, I three bet called Queen Jack suited for like 35 bigs against Greg. Mm -hmm. And I had seen a hand where he had crammed like a suited king against Keith. Um, and I just thought he would be able to have like light stuff that I was dominating. And it was like back in the, the day where like if he had something like ace queen, he would just always four bet small. Four bet induced. That's what we're, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, nowadays we have like the offsuit combos, you probably like shove or whatever, but, uh, but yeah, so, so that, that's that, like, that actually cost me a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were kind of right, right? He didn't have a, big yeah, he had a king five. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> you were in there, in there flipping. <laughs> no, I, I can't remember. Was there a day off between, uh, uh, whatever day seven in the final table or whatever there were it was? Three months off. Back three, oh, that, that, that was, that was yeah, the November nine, nine. Yeah. Which was so cool. I, I, I like, I'm so sad that they changed that because. It, it made it such a unique turn. I mean, it's already the main, but it made it such a unique tournament. And I was able to get 200 people to fly out and come see it. And that All that part of it's cool. I hate the... I hate the at the end after you're playing like a different player, basically. Yeah, exactly. That's Everyone gets coaching. Yeah. And like, I'm pretty sure, well, I think there's a chance. I, I was coaching someone in the final table as well, but I could be wrong. I did it a couple of years around then. Yeah. But yeah, like um, uh, I believe, didn't uh, Vanessa Selps like uh, give you some... I wouldn't say yeah, coaching, yeah. but like at least some no, advice. No, she definitely did coaching. Yeah. Um, I hired her. She went so far above and beyond too. Like I hired her like prepare me for the final table. She ended up flying out and going to the final table. She sat there. Like we played three-handed for 14 hours. She stayed up all night like watching hands on an iPad oh, so and telling me like reads she got and stuff like that in between hands. Um, yeah, I mean she, she was like unbelievable. Did that. The, during the three months off, did you ever think about uh, hiring someone to kill one of the other players to get a pay jump? <laughs> I mean, you could do like something like a murder suicide, maybe get two pay jumps or something. But like, I don't. If I, I, I did think about, about that, I'm not saying. <laughs> I'll leave you with it. No. I actually really liked everyone at that final table. We had uh, oh Jake Jake Balsiger got third. Has mm -hmm. become a good friend of mine. He's an awesome kid. Um, Salah Boover was there. He's oh, a maniac, yeah, and yeah. I think I, he's. I liked him a lot. Yeah, yeah he's a, he's a great human being. He's he's so funny, and uh, I think I think he might.
play our games soon. I uh, somebody was talking to him and, and saying that he was gonna give him a. He's he's I fucking fun to play with in tournaments. I know that. Yeah, he plays fast. I mean, that was his thing, he's right? Like, it's like, yeah. yeah. like light speed, fast. Um, he's really funny. Yep. Yeah. He was very like quick retort. I guess it makes sense these fast retorts, but like, yeah, his brain just works on a different level. We so played sometimes years. People's ovens just burn hotter. You know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it. My oven burns very. Very low, mild, yeah. chill. Yeah. You got chill, chill oven. Trying situation. to speed it up, man. But I, um, I played with him years later, and I think he like got slightly lucky in a hand against me. And somebody, somebody was like, "Oh, he got lucky there, or whatever." And I was like, "I'm pretty sure," because I, 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 uh, I got there against him to knock him out in eighth. And I was so this is like years later, and I'm like, "I'm pretty sure if I sucked out on him every day in tournaments, I'd still be up like in equity." And Rob just looks at me and immediately goes. It's all right, man. He's like, because he used to party a lot. Uh -huh. He goes, it's all right, man. He's like, if I won the main event, I'm pretty sure I'd be dead right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's good yeah, he's, he's unbelievable. That's great. Well, so how, how long did a heads up last then? So heads up didn't last that long, actually. Uh, we, but, but also that was partially because we came in a three-handed like really deep. I sure, think. yeah, yeah. I think we had like 120 bigs each or something. And then we played for 14 hours. So by the time we got heads up, we had like 30 blinds or something. Oh, yeah, you said it was 14 hours of, of yeah. three-handed? It was outrageous. I, I didn't help things by playing quite yeah. slow. You were like, had all this new knowledge you learned in three months. You are like, how do I apply it here? Vanessa, cool. be in my head, Vanessa. <laughs> by the way, that's, like, that's, that's problematic, man. I've watched other final tables where people clearly got coaching. Yeah. And like getting some things right but other things wrong is often so much worse than just not doing it. I've heard that from other coaches. They're like, do you know you should just, well, not really from coaches that actually want to make money in that window, but like, they're, they're like, yeah, listen, it's, if you're there already, it's too late. You need to just play the best that you have in your head. I agree. Yeah. And just do what you've been doing, but like, try to do it the best you can. Because, or just yeah. like, work on like little things like, hey, uh, you should play a little bit tighter because there's pay jumps, not like. Right. Like, That's fine too. Yeah. We, yeah, we saw one kid who was playing like real nitty. 11 handed uh, one year, it wasn't at my final table. And, uh, and then all of a sudden he's just peeling any two in the big blind. And then he just has no idea how to play his hands post flop. And it's like, you should have just not told him to do that. You know right, I mean? yeah. Right, yeah. They, like I, when I was uh, learning poker and trying to get good at poker, I would buy poker books or whatever because that's how old I am. There was no videos at that time. I remember those days, yeah. man. So like I would get a poker book and like immediately I would just go on a downswing and I was like, what? I don't, I'm, I'm getting smarter clearly. It's because I, I didn't have the intellect to actually know how to apply what they're telling me to do. And like it took a while to be like, oh, it's situational. I can't just do yeah. this across the board. So like that's kind of what like when you have three months of coaching and you're like, oh, whatever. Boston, you're always like, you know, three bets light here from the small blind in this spot. And you're like, oh, if he, and then he three bets you, you're just like, just tunnel vision. It's just like, oh, yeah. I know this new trick now. Yeah, like yep. I, I learned this trick over the last three months. He's light. Fuck him. I'm going to four bet him. I'm not saying you specifically, but that's like, actually that, that, exactly that's how it works one of the up. things that we did. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even joking. We noticed that Jake would, um, Vanessa picked this up. It was like, had to be a half a million dollar like read that she came up with when we were three handed, but she was like, you know, Jake has when he's like 30 to 40 blinds deep he's ripped ace king and jacks over your open but then he three bets small with like queen 10 offsuit yep. and stuff so i just started four betting everything and we're like all right if he has aces he has aces but but i mean it's still like it still holds true though like it's like you you kind of lose track of uh other things it's like if there's like a, a whatever a pay jump and someone has like eight big blinds like that kind of like leaves your mind like yep. not you specifically yeah, yeah. but like you no, know you're absolutely and like you, you're not focusing on that anymore you're focusing on like the thing you've been practicing for three months and that's all that matters instead of like oh yeah i know what we were told but she's or he's never doing that in this spot mm -hmm. ever 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 so yeah full like i i do think it's impossible like i do think too much information is bad just just for in sure. general like a. Uh, and I, I think it kind of freezes some people at the final table as well. Like I, I know you enjoyed the, the the drama in between or whatever. But as a person looking on, you know, on the outside, I thought it was pretty bad. Honestly, I think there's a I think that there's a nice middle ground, maybe two or three weeks, where you can get off and plan everything out with your friends. I think and family. that's fine. Yeah, I would be okay with that. You don't need that. three months, no. but yeah, I'm kind of with you on that. I also think that. Um, I think that like you're kind of describing something and that they talk about in learning any concept where it's like. It's like this pendulum effect where you learn a concept and then you take it too far inevitably because mm -hmm. yeah. it's working and then you're like bad the other way. And so now you're like swinging between these concepts 
and you have to play a final table for all the money that you'll ever play for, and <laughs> it's just ridiculous, you know? The, yeah, the biggest spot. I mean, like, you know, God willing, you'll get back to the, the final table or whatever, but, like, in all likelihood, you know, you, you should maybe get one shot every couple lifetimes yeah. <laughs> at, at the final table. I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to do. I mean, Jeremy, Jeremy Ospis will be back for sure, but... I thought it was pretty easy, but I've been trying ever since, you know. <laughs> Second year I did it, I was like, eh. So, have you been playing every single year since 2011? Oh, yeah. And how many caches have you had in the main event? You should know Two, this. Two, I think. Two total? Yeah, I think. Okay. Oh, after. Two after, okay. So, quick math like... here. So, you've played like 13, 14, and you've cast three times? Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's solid. It's not terrible. Any other deep runs or uh, just? Not really. No. No. Um, probably, probably final table a couple more times. We'll see. <laughs> All right. So you're this young, cool kid, 26 years old, 27. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. You're fairly cool. You have 5.6 million dollars after you like you know do your swaps or whatever, cash out, pay taxes, obviously. Yeah. Well, I had a backer at the time, so I had I okay. had like half of that, but still, I made a lot of money. Yeah. So. Sure. Uh, what was your mindset? Like, was it like, I, I can't wait to play bigger in poker? Or was it like, I can't wait to invest and not play poker? What was... Um, it's interesting. So I didn't... I didn't necessarily want to play bigger. I guess I want to play bigger in the sense I want to play bigger tournaments that I previously played. But it was more that I wanted to, like, switch over to tournaments a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I still wanted to... I still moved... We moved to L.A. for a year. I still, like, thought about pursuing... Um, uh, right. Film school and stuff. Yeah. Did you write any scripts? I haven't. No. No. I'm. I'm sorry to say that too. I really. Come on, man. That was your dream, and you made three million dollars. I'm working on it. On your... <laughs> finally, I'm working slowly. Uh, are you really? Yeah. Well, very slow. Any working titles you can uh, share with the fans? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not yet. Um, no, but I, I got. I had a really good opportunity. I was sponsored by Eight at Eight Poker at the time. Mm -hmm. After so plans kind of shifted and it wasn't so much like I took bigger shots as like I was already traveling playing tournaments under them so then I just would play other tournaments like on my own or whatever I went on my own which is obviously taking a bigger sure. piece no no for um, sure yeah you dropped the backer right away or uh... uh pretty much yeah I mean like we kind of like I wouldn't say I dropped him so much as we were like okay well that's a nice time to the best part was when he started backing me I was I was living in Vegas I was down swinging um I was staking someone and I was, um, and I was, uh, playing and I was, I was down swinging and my, my guy I was staking was down swinging and in there. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard of such things. <laughs> and, uh, and so I was talking to him and I was like, I might get someone else to stake me that I knew backed people. And I was like, I just want to feel more comfortable when I'm playing at the table. Like I'm not stressing it. And he was like, well, I'd back you. I was like, Oh really? And so we like walked over to the Bellagio, that little Bellagio bar right next to the poker mm -hmm. room and talked about it for like 10 minutes and I remember specifically one of the things he said was, we need to come up with a number that you have to like make before you end the backing agreement. So you don't just like win 20K and, sure. and leave and I risk losing 100. And so he came up with like 40 each. And then when I, when I was cutting him the check for his half for the main, I was like, yeah, we did a little better than 40. <laughs> How are you doing for him up till then? Just more out of curiosity, like breaking even, slightly winning. Yeah, I'd made him some money. It was funny that summer, I started off that summer running really bad and like we had some really good big PLO games that summer and I, the first week of the summer I lost like 50k um which like it was like 25 50 so it wasn't like the end yeah. of the world but it sucked and uh he made a joke about like he had just bought a, like a really nice new car and he was like well, I have to sell my car I was like oh come on man <laughs> and then um and then I had slowly while bricking every um, prelim tournament the world series that summer I had like slowly made it all back in cash games I remember I was up like 5k on stake and I wanted to sell the other half of the main buy-in because I didn't want to be in makeup if I wanted to move to LA like if we were going to wow, end it sick. yeah I didn't want to be that's in any makeup sick. and he was like no I feel good about the main like don't sell any what? And fucking he, genius yeah <laughs> it was pretty sick we ended up selling one person five percent at like two 2.0 2 because wow. he was like I'm only selling yeah. <laughs> apparently not though not not a good deal for you not as great. it turns out <laughs> He would have played differently, though, for sure. Yeah, it's true. Maybe. Who knows? If anything, you gone. I mean, I'm a big believer in the butterfly effect. Damn so. right. We're all here because we're supposed to be here. No, that's not true. But I don't know. 
I mean, I think we'd all still be here if a few things went differently, but you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I got some inflection points that definitely would have changed my life. Yeah, I had a rollover accident in my senior year of high school. That could have gone the other way. <laughs> could have been in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> and, you know, we're all the lucky sperm, if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. We're all one in a million. Billions. <laughs> all right, so where were we? Where do we go from here? I forgot literally where uh, we were. Jesse had signed with 888. He is traveling yeah. around doing all these tournaments. Oh, yeah. So how did how do those deals work back then the 888 are you uh they're paying you every time you go to a tournament they're putting you in what's the, what's the deal um so i don't know how everyone's deal works at different places like for instance i think i was like one of the last years that actually got deals like this yeah. mm-hmm. um but i think there were like three or four tournaments a year that they would put me in and wherever i played i had to wear like my patch and everything um we did a couple trips we did like aussie millions they put me in the main um event at the world series Maybe like an EPT we did. I think we did Barcelona. Uh, and then I played online. They gave me buy-ins for tournaments online. Oh, okay. So that was kind of like what I got on my end. And then I just did like a lot of traveling and did events and whatever. Did you get a salary? Um, the salary was kind of like playing online, essentially. Oh, okay. They were kind of like online. 100% rake back or what? Uh, like they would just put me in tournaments. Essentially. Oh, so you get a free roll. Yeah. And they don't want a piece of it. They so just like put you in and whatever. Make sure, yeah. make, make so sure you was, showed up at the play. It was yeah. smart. It was smarter than a salary, assuming I don't get like crazy out of line with playing everything yeah. for them because the more volume I play, like, like, like I make more if I play more volume, but they at least get me like playing a ton of volume on their website. Right. Yeah. Um, and the patch thing helps even though, cause that was like one of the only sites you could play on, right? Back then, or you couldn't even play on it in America. I don't even no, know. No, I, I had to move to play on it. Oh, wow. And I even asked, I was like, can I just VPN? They're like, please don't <laughs> VPN as like one of the ambassadors. <laughs> it's like, okay, fine. Yeah, don't get caught like that. Yeah. One guy went in a tournament and yeah, bad free roll there to, to be VPN. So did, where you moved to Vancouver then or what? Canada? Uh, I went to Mexico for a bit. We were in, um, Russ, me and Russ went out there actually. We were in, uh, we were in, um, what is it called? Uh, in Baja, California. Um, Tijuana? Tijuana? No, what's that? What's like, where does everyone go? Like, right below Rosarito? Right below, thank you, Rosarito. Oh, we were oh, in Rosarito, Rosarito for a bit. We actually rented a sweet house, like, right on the cliff. Um, yeah, because you got that fuck you money now. Look at yeah. you. I don't think you. I don't think you need was, that for reservation. Yeah, you really <laughs> didn't. From what I've seen on the, uh, well, they didn't have Airbnb back then, but the uh, the equivalent, the yeah. RBO, it was a lot of like, it's like pretty nice looking houses for pretty cheap, and you probably you know why they're so cheap. There's just like nothing out there, right? It's just we were pretty beach. secluded in that area. You could live in the town, and there's a lot going on in the town, but we we lived on. We lived off this road, so you could take like the highway from Tijuana to Rosarito, or you could take the beach road. And the beach road had a like a fifty cent toll to get on. No one drove on that road, so it was like very quiet. We were just like tucked away. No one wanted to spend the fifty cents. Not really. <laughs> it was pretty wild. We get robbed if you do that. People know you got money. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> where the cops hang out to bribe to get the bribes. <laughs> it was an interesting. Yeah, it was no, but you're right. The prices were like. I mean, for what you got, like we lived in a beautiful house overlooking yeah. the water. It was not that much. Did you live there or you would like go back and forth between? We were only there for a few months, I think. Oh, okay. And then I was traveling enough that I would just play when I traveled. Yeah. Um, I didn't utilize uh, the online stuff as much as I should well, have at all. But... You were young. Yeah. Like, I mean, traveling has got to be way more fun than playing like big tournaments as opposed to like grinding out $200 888 tournaments. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I guess I was playing like a lot of tournaments at once probably. So it. Yeah, it felt like out. grandiose, but yeah, yeah. I'm sure you got a little bit more thrill going to Barcelona and, oh, yeah. and hopping in a, a 10k or something. Definitely, uh, Barcelona in particular was really cool. That yeah. was like one of the places I wanted to wanted to go to really badly, and it, it was actually like one of the hyped up cities that didn't disappoint. Like, um, I've been to a couple other cities like Paris where you know you hear everything about it, and I was like, all right, this is cool. But Barcelona, I was like, this place is sweet. I'm with you on that. I've yeah. only been once, but man, I love that place. Yeah. So what would you say your favorite city, not just for poker, just uh, let's just say that you got exposed to because of poker? Uh, Melbourne, Australia. There you go. That's, that's, that's a good fucking answer. It's I the love, best. Dude. I love that city too. I, do. I, I think that tournament series was like, there wasn't a better one, including the World Series. Like, I just love being out there so much. And it's dead now. Yeah. Ooh, I'm hearing rumors they might bring it back, but man, that was tough. Yeah. I missed it. I missed it. I know. If they come back, you have to. I, I honestly, so I think I... Fun. I actually met him there uh, for lunch or dinner or something like that at one point. But like, I think we were there the last year it was going on. It was right before COVID. Yep. 
That was a wild year. Yeah. That's Aussie Millions, right? The yeah, album. Aussie yeah. Millions. You were doing like some promo stuff for him too. I remember you had to do like a, I don't know, some, something for media or whatever, like uh, to hmm. like the, my opening day, I'm pretty sure. That's definitely, I don't, I don't remember exactly, but I'm yeah, sure. I don't know, you're it's quite very popular. Possible. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> I remember Mike winning everything. No, no, like not winning anything. Like he no, just, no, no, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. But okay. I just, all I remember from those three years in a row was just Mike yeah, going out Mike and crushed. And uh, Toby, too. I was, yeah. I remember sitting one time out there thinking, like, they just must think Mike and Toby are so far and away the best two poker players that have ever existed. <laughs> Toby would go out every year and win a million dollars. Mike would go out every year and final table the main event. It was insane. Yeah, and the main we, event was like uh, 800 people. We used to play poker with someone in the cash game, and he said, uh, he said, if anyone ever goes to Aussie Millions that plays this game, where it was like 10, 20, no limit at Bellagio, uh, he was like, sight unseen, I'll pay 1.5 markup, whatever you want. Really? Whatever you want to sell, I'll buy it. Cause wow. Just because like, the action is so good out there, I guess, because they don't get like big tournaments all the time, and it's hard for, like, there was no APPT back then, I don't think, or yeah. wh whatever. It was like small stakes compared to America, and there was no tours. So it was just like anyone willing to make the trip you know, they they were there to play poker, and everyone that was already there was just there to gamble. So it was like that was his his shtick, and I think I think he made a good amount of money like doing that. So. I mean, the tournaments were really. I think everyone would hype up the cash games, especially PLO, and I never thought they were that soft. Yeah. But the tournaments were always great, and I think it's what you said. Like they they just don't have that many other tournaments. Yeah. You know, you've got the online guys that are very good, but there's only so many of those guys in Australia. So then you just have like bunch of people who normally play other games that sure. are playing tournaments. Yeah, this is the days before re-entry and all that. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's <laughs> really helpful. Get a bullet and do your best with it and then play the side events if you bust or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> only You only have to beat uh, one Fedor Holtz to, uh, <laughs> to, get, to get him out of the tournament. <laughs> that's massive, man. Like, you would get to the final table, like the main. You'd always have a couple of guys at the final table that were, like, complete... Yeah. Amateurs or whatever, and like I love that. Like that's that's a big really part of the beauty the of poker. Yeah. yeah, it's tough getting through. I mean, look at the. Uh, I I like love the win tournament, but like you know, it's a re-entry. Look at the FT. Like everyone, the FT was like very very good at yeah. poker. Yeah, no, you're, you're yeah, right. but like they they at least do the good thing. To your point, I, I love the win the way they do tournaments, mass tournaments at least, and it was fantastic that like. No re-entry per day or whatever. And like, I understand that like, you're yeah. still kind of splitting hairs a little bit. Like, you still got four cracks at it. But, like, compared to, like, any other money grab tournament that, like, has, like, multiple re-entries, it's just, like, you fire till your heart's content. Yep. Give us all the rake. No, 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 for sure. That's, I, yeah. honestly, every decision that the win made in that tournament series was a good decision. It was crazy. Like, the way they dealt with bubbles, the way, like, I was really impressed by their, I mean, I'm, I almost wasn't impressed because they always do well. Yeah, with, like, that's true. Ray and those guys Ray, are just Ray very good. Yeah, yeah, they really are very good at what they do. And it's um, it's funny when you look at other series around town sometimes. You're just like, can't you just get those guys to consult or something? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, like, maybe their bosses are more concerned about the bottom line as opposed to the big picture. Like, I, I don't yeah. know that to be, like, true for any of them across Vegas or whatever. But, like, I'm sure there's some pressure where they're like, I want to put a guarantee on this. But I don't want re-entries up to a certain point. And they're like, "Well, don't we need re-entries to get the guarantee?" Yeah. And like, it's like, no, but we're gonna we're gonna make the players happier. It's like, fuck the players. I don't know them. Like, I want them out playing blackjack. I want them to bust and like you know play blackjack and enter it in the next day. You know, it's funny. The main the main actually missed their guarantee, but every other tournament of that series, uh, I think somebody told me they tr at least tripled the guarantee. Yeah, maybe it's not not crazy. quite that much, but it's it's super big regardless. And like the fact that they barely miss the guarantee shouldn't be taken as a sign of of any kind of uh, incompetence. It's they missed it by like very small, like one one percent, maybe one and a half percent, something silly. I think with Rake, they probably made money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the the fact that like they were bold enough to put a forty million dollar guarantee. Yeah, I believe that's the biggest in of all time. I believe. I think it would have to be right. I mean, yeah, unless you, yeah, unless there's some, the, some hundred thousand dollar buy-in maybe happen. Right, but, but yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, I can't even imagine that would get there. Yeah. Even that, you'd have to get four hundred people. Oh like, yeah, that's probably that. That shows such yeah. faith from like the win itself to the poker room. Yeah, like in uh, the poker community. Yeah. And Super the poker cool. community, and like they saw the writing on the wall, and it got so many people out there, and they did such a good job. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I, yeah, I hope they. I hope the management takes it as like a w absolute win for yeah. next year, and they they do it again, or they. You know, you did there. 
Are not intentionally smart. <laughs> totally on accident. An absolute win. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, I hope I hope they run it again. If they if they don't run it back next year for forty million, you know, thirty million is okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, on top of that, even I, I hope they do something similar during the the summer. I, I I'm kind of done calling it the World Series, but like during the during, during the summer, I hope they do something similar to kind of. Get a little more uh, wiggle room into the monopoly that is the World Series. Yeah, last podcast, me and Justin were riffing a little bit about uh, about how the dilution of the bracelet has happened over time, and now it's fucking two hundred bracelets a year. And Phil Hummy is shaking in his boots over the over the fourteen or eighteen or however many he has that he worked so hard on. <laughs> and now now they're beating him with forty thousand for first online bracelet. <laughs> I mean, I mean, being serious, I mean, I, I have zero bracelets, clearly. But like, I know I, I had this. Sorry to interrupt you. I had the same issue because I was telling my dad about the whole argument about the dilution of the bracelet and stuff, and he was like, "Well, what do you feel about?" It? I was like, "Well, I still haven't won one, so yeah. I haven't diluted it enough." Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Like, I, a couple of my good friends like won two over the summer in like these small online tournaments that like, you know, give fifty k to first, and like, it, it's not so much like the amount of money that you win, but like the competition that you're against. Like, world. World Series of Bracelet should mean like you beat the best in the world and like instead it's like I beat the best in Nevada on a random Tuesday. Yeah, either beat the best in the world or like had the biggest feel like a really hard obstacle to to overcome or yeah. And like again, I, not trying to be salty about it because like again like you I have zero and like I haven't really sniffed one ever uh, unlike you but like I don't know I, I just like, thought it was something in my, early in my poker career I wanted it so bad. Like I, I, a few years I played events. I didn't even know the rules of how to play, and like because I just wanted one so bad. I was like, I'll figure it out later, you know. Yeah, yeah. And now it's just like that's, it's, it's gone. Like there's no like prestige. There's no like anything. Like yeah, every event's a circuit event now. It seems like and it's great. Like people will, like like used to like wear their bracelets to the table, and you're like, oh my god, that's so fucking cool. Like <laughs> yeah. what'd you win? And they're like, oh, they won the three k, like no limit. You're like, dude, that's sick. That's so hard to do. And now it's just like, where'd you get a bracelet? I don't know, man. I have a four, four of them, five of them. I'm not even sure anymore. Like, <laughs> two fifteen PLO. Yeah, I can only play with other people from mail. Michigan. <laughs> I forgot Michigan ran some. It's. I mean, again, I'm not trying to boohoo it too much. It's like obviously I still yeah, want I still one. Want I'm, I'm. It's a lot of sour grapes. I'm sure. But like, it's 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 gotten laughable. That like we're just like, whatever. When I wake up and get on the internet, it was like. Joe Schmo wins a bracelet. And you're like, there was a bracelet event last night? I had yeah. no idea yeah. what was I going on. Yeah, I know what on. you mean with that kind of. It's funny. I go back and forth on that for sure. Um, I still think it's like super cool when you win like a 10K world championship bracelet, like the 10K Raz or whatever. Well, I, is like. I, th I think those definitely carry a lot more weight because, yeah, yeah. I mean, if it were up to me, like online ones would disappear completely. Sure. But like, or they used to run like one. On, it was like the online bracelet. Sure. That was pretty cool. That, that was know? fine too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone knew when it was. Right. And everyone at the tournament was on their phone. Remember that? Yeah, like yeah. literally every. I remember one year. You play the tournament while you play the tournament. Yeah. yeah. You got a double dip. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they were handing out the free chargers that one year. Is that what you were gonna say? No, no, no. I was gonna say one year, uh, two kids got heads up in the, or two guys got heads up in the. It was like one of two bracelet events, and one guy timed out, and the other guy just blinded him out. And it turns out he was on the Rio's internet. <laughs> the guy who timed out. And it was like not a good look. <laughs> not a good look at all. I was thinking when they were going around handing out the portable chargers that said WSOP. I think I have one. They were like, really? if you're playing the bracelet event, hold up your phone and we'll give you a portable Sweet. charger or whatever. And How you know, pissed off was the guy in the hallway that was selling? Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> what? Like, Charge up for your phone. <laughs> <laughs> he's just out there like having a fit. He's like, oh, excuse me? For free? For free? He's probably just went in there and registered so he could get a couple and yeah. sell them for $1,000 or whatever the buy-in was for the tournament. It's going to be a lot, a lot harder to negotiate now. Oh, yeah. Shout out to the cell phone charger guy <laughs> at the World Series. Yeah. Again, not trying to boohoo it too much or whatever, but like I, I do hope the win kind of takes a bigger chunk out of it. kind of makes him realize it's not a monopoly that like... People just want like well-run tournaments with big prize pools. Yeah, make it a competition where they actually are like, oh, we better we better yeah. work hard on our product again, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like if, if they want to run 200 tournaments, obviously, or 200 bracelet events, that's still fine. I just want them run as efficiently as the win. That's all. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, so you've been doing uh, some commentary for the win, I hear. Yeah. Yeah, it's been really fun. I, I like working. <laughs> <with the win. laughs> 
<laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you were so good, too. It's all over. <laughs> he, he, he just, just, he's like... <laughs> he's like, we already talked about this, mother mugger. <laughs> no, I thought we were going back. No, uh, it's fine. I just, we made eye contact and it was all over. <laughs> It was this so funny I because you the fucking live commentary that you do because you can't just go devolve into fucking laughing <laughs> at each other's faces like this. I yeah. did it, but I was alone. Uh, not this year, but last year. Dude, this was like the funniest thing ever. I'm doing this cash game. It was like the last event at the win. It was like the celebrity cash game, but the only celebrity was, maybe there are two celebrities, but one was Gilbert Arenas and he got stacked hand one and then he was just gone. <laughs> and then it was just like the Hellmuth show. And I'm like so sick. Uh, me and Asher are supposed to do it together. She's legitimately can't get out of bed sick. I'm like sore throat, whatever sick. And Jamie's got no one else to do it. Jeez. And she's like, can you please get down here and do it alone? I'm like, okay, just like get a tea station for me so I can just make a bunch of teas because my throat <laughs> is gone. And uh, so I, I drive down, I get there. It's like in this special area that the rest of the stuff wasn't in. And um, so they have me set up in like this industrial kitchen. It's like this big industrial kitchen with like a table with like my computer screen so I can see stuff and me on the, the thing. And I'm just like alone doing it. And then I, it's like six hours of Helmuth just berating Carrying. everyone and being, being like, just, being I think himself. he's like, he's, I think he's the funniest guy alive. I really do. <laughs> um, he's so funny and he's hilarious. Like he's great to be around. He's really, he's like, whatever. It, anyways, he, he keeps telling people this one stat, which is like, He's, he's 28 for 28 in his last cash game sessions on okay. winning. And he keeps mentioning that. And then he loses a couple of pots and he goes off. And he's just like yelling at everyone. He's like, I'm the greatest. You, you guys are so lucky that like you keep getting there, blah, blah, blah. And then he looks at Dan Smith, who just sat down, and he's like, realizes Dan doesn't know the stat yet. <laughs> and he's like, Dan, 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 did I tell you I'm 28 out of 28? And I just start howling. And I'm like high pitched, like squealing, laughing for like three and a half minutes. And the, the chat's like making fun of me. Like Jesse's lost it. Like he's completely deranged. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, you guys, you have to understand. Like I'm sick as a dog. I'm down here in this like kitchen doing commentary. I have no voice. And Phil is just losing his mind. <laughs> And then he kept telling Dan the stat. I'm like, he's doing it. He's breaking up the stat again. <laughs> I'm just like, losing. The, the, the stream's just like slowly just bring in one person like every like 10 minutes so he has to retell the same fucking story. Yeah. <laughs> <He's like laughs> Sorry, we're stepping out Dan Smith here. Comes yeah. Jason oh, Coon. <laughs> he doesn't know the stat. <laughs> he's like, Jason. No, seriously, I don't know if you heard. <laughs> it's so good. Did Dan tell you on the way out? Did, he, <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you guys swap information about the stat? Oh, so and he was down like the whole session. I think he got up like fifty bucks at the end. I, I'm not hundred percent about it. Oh, that, that sounds right. Well, yeah, I, so, I, yeah, he hit the stat. I would guess in his ledger he was up fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah. Now whether or not it, it actually happened, but yeah, <laughs> I love. Phil. Uh, I really I love Phil. Yeah, I love playing with Phil so he's much. He's great. He really is. <laughs> and he knows it too. I, I asked him one time about he plays this game up in um, Silicon Valley, like a big game. Yeah. And he was like, they love me up there. He's like, whenever I take a bad beat and I start, he called it his Phil. He's like, I start doing my Phil thing. <laughs> he was like, they put on music and they start dancing. And <laughs> I was like, who's better than Phil, man? Honestly. You know, he has, he's the most self-aware, unself-aware man there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's the best. Yeah. And I used to think that that whole thing was an act until I don't remember who told me they followed him out like after he busted a tournament and he was like, talking to himself in the hallway the same way he would at the table. He was like, fucking, I'm the greatest in the world. They don't even know. It's me, Phil Helmuth. <laughs> it's definitely not an reason. act, yeah. which is why it's endearing. Like, I, I, I didn't like him until I got to know him, and now I kind of understand, like, who <laughs> Phil is, and, like, I'm okay with that because, like, he's just honest. That's, that's, yeah. that's all you can ask of people. Yeah. yeah. Be, he's so good. Be your true self. Yeah. <laughs> he also taught me, he re-taught me to manifest because I watched that cash game, and he sat down, he told them, I'm going to make the nuts 15 times today. And he made the nuts at least 15 times. And I was like, by like the 15th time, I'm just like, that's it. Like, I'm just going to start saying this. Like, How is he still down also? <laughs> he had some tough ones. Well, he's, he's running, he's running pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> he had some tough ones. Yeah. You oh. guys couldn't even spell poker. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Phil's great. So that was your breakdown and commentary moment. You, uh, yeah, you just, that was <laughs> I can't imagine doing commentary with fucking like Ali Najad. Like we, I don't know how Nick does it, man. Nick Shulman and Ali Najad is like the ultimate pair because They're so good. Because Ali's just constantly trying to get Nick to break. I feel like, yeah. and Nick is just 
being his eloquent self. Yeah. It's fucking amazing. But, oh, like, so but when good. Nick breaks down, it's just the best. It's just like, composer, composer, you're losing it, losing it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he has such a high-pitched laugh when you get him really going. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's so good. When the one where Bonomo's like shaking his leg and his hands there, they were so, everything they said and just how they were laughing was so funny. Someone sent me the clip. I was like, they were like you right now too. They were like, they couldn't even, yeah, they were just like trying to breathe. It It was so good. They sent you the clip. or or Like I had a friend like send me the clip and I was like, dude, I mean, like I I like him a lot, but it can't be that funny. And like, just, it's just like, then like, it was, it's more about the fucking 30 seconds before he loses it. Like, like he's just barely hanging on. And he's just like desperately, he's like, the ride down the hill to losing it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. Yeah, that was one of the greater moments in all of broadcasting history. Those two are like the goats, though. They're so funny. Uh, They're amazing. I I got to do a little bit of live commentary this summer with Ali. Um, It's like one or two final tables. And I was talking about how great him and him and Nick are. And he told, he told me his favorite moment in all of like their work together was just, he said something, cause you were saying like how he always pokes at him. Yeah. And I guess one time he did it and Ollie just, I mean, uh, Nick just quietly just like lets it linger. And he just goes, shut the fuck up, Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> the future Norman Chad and Lon McCarran right there, guys. Yes. <laughs> they're going to be, they're going to be around for a while. I love that's his favorite moment in broadcasting. Yeah. It's just like finally getting under his skin. <laughs> so good. So do you have anything uh, coming up uh, media-wise, promotional-wise? I'm not sure actually right now. We're, uh, I'm talking to some people about potentially doing a bunch of stuff, but I don't. it could be nothing. It could be some sure. things. I really like doing it, so I want to do more of it. Um, and yeah, just like working working a bunch this last month, like... Kind of, I felt like, um, especially like I did a lot of time in the booth with Henry and I felt like we got into a really good rhythm where we had some like back and forth going. And when you hit that groove, like, you know, with anything, like yep. starts to feel really good. And you're like, oh, I want to do more of this. Like you, you feel like you're getting it or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'd like to do a lot more of it in the future. Less poker, sure. more commentary or just going to eh, I'll try to more just find more time in, <laughs> in my day. And, yeah, I don't know. Because I've been playing a lot more poker lately too, so maybe... Maybe maybe less screwing tournaments. around doing other yeah, stuff. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, um, yeah tournaments, a uh, little bit of cash. I've been playing some Limit Hold'em lately, Limit hold'em. which I've been getting a lot of crap for, but it's really fun. Crap from who? Like short, shorthanded Limit where, Hold'em is fun. Where I don't, I don't know about four ring, but... Uh, well, I was playing Bellagio. Yeah. The, for, Matt, Matt Moore walked by me one day. I haven't seen him in like a year and a half. Yeah. And he walks by, I didn't even think he saw me. He walks by... Or no, he did see me because he walks by, I nod at him, he nods at me, and then I just get a text from him. He's like, why are you playing Limit Hold'em? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been enjoying it. Cool. Uh, yeah, I, I, anytime I used to be waiting for a game and I would get into like the 2040, I started playing the 2040 Limit Hold'em and like the 4080 Limit Hold'em yeah. over there, and it is really fun. You get to be in action in a lot of hands. Yeah, and yeah. like, I don't know if it's good or bad, but like, you're always going to show down, which is nice. <laughs> you sure are. And also, you're showing down quickly. We yep. played like oh, yeah. I, one half an hour. I counted the number of hands. We played 29 hands. Wow. You play like, that's what, double. 12 in? Yeah. It's it's at least double. Yeah. And that's yeah. very true because like, I don't know. I don't know why. It's just a different mindset, which is fantastic. Like limit players is like that fast. And that. I think they do it to like show confidence or I don't know even know why, but like it's great. Like you just get the hand and everyone just flip their hand up. I'm like, do I win? I have no idea. Like yeah. <laughs> top pair. I was like, oh, no top pair is never going to good. Yeah, no. The, oh, the wow. thing I love about the Bellagio with the limit hold'em, maybe it's this way in all limit hold'em, but like if you play 40, 80, guess what? We're using $10 chips. You play 20, 40, they, guess what? Low. We're using $5 chips. Yeah. Yeah. That drives me fucking nuts. <laughs> and you're just I like, think that's so you're just stupid. like constantly cutting out. If you're not cutting out four chips, it's not a limit hold'em game. It's like imagine imagine using two chips. Four chips and eight chips is like always the yeah, thing. It's, like all, you, it's you know, all four chips. If, if you're chips. raising, it's fucking eight chips and like yeah. I, but dude, you win a pot of like five bets, and it's like you're raking in chips for a dude, half an hour. It's yeah, so much fun. <laughs> it's exactly like that. You're filling up a rack. You're like calling over the porter for like another rack to like put on yeah, top. To yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll show you a video on my phone in a second. But Ashley asked me how I was doing the other day, and I was. I had like six and a half K in front of me. Yeah. And so I've literally got like a tower, like this high of just, 
It's like a a six a six stack by like a five stack by a four stack by or whatever. Yeah. And there's distinct like limit holdem versus like other types of limit holdem players where you got like some of them keep it all in a rack and oh, they yeah. keep like three working stacks. That's the LA crew. Does it? Yeah, yeah. There's us no limit players who we want a mountain. That's right. <laughs> we want. You, you yeah, want you want, want the fucking all mountain. The chips and we're we gonna, don't get that. No, we're gonna reach off right. and we're yeah. gonna go. <laughs> God, I've played limit so long. I'm gonna, you're gonna get me. Let's do like a, a meetup 4080 limit game. I, I would do that. Friends. We could play half Raz too. Good, yeah, let's, I would do that too. I would do that too. We gotta, teach, we gotta teach. We gotta teach Art new games. But yeah, but like one of the more terrifying learned, things in limit poker. Dollars at a time. Let's like when you bet the river, like whatever, semi light or whatever, or like you know semi value, and then they they break off like four chips out of their like 20 sack. And you're like, oh, they're going to call. This is going to be good. And then there's like, put that aside and just grab that 16 chips and fucking put it <laughs> oh, in your face. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's the little sure. hole in check raise right there. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, they grab the chips to call, but then this hand is like sliding in the, uh, <laughs> the, the 2X or 8X or whatever the fuck it is on the river in that game. So I, I go to Bellagio two days ago. I'm waiting for my limit hold'em game. There's a 5'10 no limit, so I sit down. And... Uh, the first hand, it like folds around this guy and he just like takes like eight seconds. Then he like looks at his hand then he takes like another eight seconds and he folds. And I was like, if that happened at the Limit Hold'em game, they would have murdered him by the ninth <laughs> second. Like, it wouldn't even been close. Like somebody would have stood up and fought that man. Dude, you used to get so much shit for tanking. Oh, <laughs> yeah. imagine, imagine old Jesse comes to the Limit Hold'em for the first time and he's just like, they would have burned cards, me alive. Put on my down. Sorry, a big point. How, how much do you have? You play? How much are you playing? <laughs> I don't know, man. He's like, no, no. I can I get an exact count? I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, I don't they got know. one of those spots. <laughs> when you guys had Len on, did he tell you his um, his story of why he hates tournaments? Uh, he, no, he literally told us about one percent of his entire like that plethora of stories. Yeah. He's, he's so yeah, no, the greatest yeah, treasure trove least, of. Oh my god. There was at least three I hadn't heard before, so I was really grateful for that. <laughs> So you should That's go back and watch cool. that one. Because you spent a lot of time in a room yeah. with him. So. Yeah, I, <laughs> I triggered a few yeah. of his stories. And like I knew a couple and I really wanted him to tell them. So I said them. Like the triggering words, you know, that I knew he would uh, go into the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then... Uh, and then like Mississippi. And he's just like, oh, I was down in Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly like that. And, uh, and yeah, no. So he's got some really, really good ones in there. But no, I don't think he told his, uh, his uh, hating tournament story. Well, it's not even a story. I just remember at one time... He was like crapping on tournaments, and I was like, you know, you always do that, but I never know why. Like, why don't you like tournaments? Like, I'll tell you why I don't like tournaments. He was like, I sit down at the table, the first hand, the first hand of the tournament, the guy's like, how much are you playing? He's like, how much are you playing, buddy? <laughs> it's like, we got the same stack. <laughs> yeah, this is hand one. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right, fair enough, because that's definitely happened a yeah. bunch of times. Yeah, that is, uh, that makes perfect sense, actually. To yeah. one of those. Oh, that's awesome. You're getting a limit. Like, that's a lost art. I, I'm being yeah. serious. Like, I, I cut my teeth, like, playing, like, limit, like, uh, in college and, like, just out of college or whatever, so. Yeah, I mean, I was just, I was just playing a few sessions. I was having fun, for oh, sure. That's, so, sometimes uh, breaking up the monotony a little bit and uh, doing something out of your comfort zone kind of refocuses you, uh, or me, anyway. Yeah. Like, uh, it's, it's nice. Yeah. I've been working on some mixed games, too. I really want to push myself to play the bigger mixed events this year at the series. And so like I've been working a lot on I'd like to. Okay. I don't know if I'm there yet, but maybe I'll take a couple shots. I think like certain games maybe I'm getting close and other games I'm pretty damn far away. And I mean, I, I would suggest like maybe playing some cash games, like lower limit cash games, just kind of like get your uh, beak wet a little bit and yeah. uh, go from there. I, two times in my life I have showed up to uh, mixed games and told them, I was like, I'm not a good player, guys. I need you guys to tell me when I fuck up. I've done exactly that before. It's and the it's best. Like, yeah, it's like, if I feel like you're being dishonest with me, I'm going to fucking leave. Yep. And like, I'm okay with losing. I'm going to be here for a month. <laughs> I'm okay with this. But you have to tell me when yeah. I fuck up. And like, the first time was like the 8160 at De Bellagio after I had a big score. And the other one was at uh, Crazy Mike's game at Aria. And like, everyone was super nice. It was yep. great. It, everyone was super, like... Oh, I wouldn't have done what you just did there because of this, this, this. I'm like, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. That, like, it, it was fantastic. No, it's they're funny. very accommodating with that kind of stuff. It's yeah. really nice to see. Yeah. It's funny. Well, I was going to say, because we have, in, in our game, we do like random bomb pots where we, where we, sometimes we make up the rules, but a lot of them are like existing games like Double Board, Omaha, but we like cap the betting so you can't lose too much. And some people who play Omaha, 
like they'll they'll help someone like next to them like after they fold yeah. they'll be like they'll be like oh like some people are just drawing dead in Omaha like me and they'll they'll be like listen bottom two pair not great on one board just bottom two don't play on that. just one board <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly so so like there's, there's not not winning that board either. yeah there's Art, Art's talking about himself <laughs> solely by the way yeah. <laughs> there's some other people there's some people <laughs> but no it's yeah. like all these guys that are playing bottom two specifically on. This board specifically. Well, yeah. Queen Jack Nine. I mean, even the oh, ones that... No. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> even the ones that have, like, the ace of spades on a four-spade board, and they're like, oh, I have the nuts. They're like, oh, nope. that's... Yeah, that's always a rough moment. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and when we break that out, sometimes we give people their bet back. If they yeah, really exactly. They had As we should, by the way. Like yeah. One card in a game they've never played before, it's like... <laughs> that, is, that is a weird thing in private games where we talk them into doing some crazy game. And they're like, oh, yeah, I love crazy stuff. And then like, yeah. they're like, I don't know the rules. And yeah. Yeah. they're like, it's okay. You just take your money back. Yeah. It's, it's not a big deal. We'll explain it to you. Watch this next one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we had, I, I had a mixed game like that where I told them, like, look, I'll lose my money to you if you tell me what I'm doing wrong. And for like the fifth time in a row, I, I was playing Badusi, Razdusi. One of the games where um, it's like normally an ace through five game, but because it has like, Usi in the name, it's deuce through seven. Yeah. And the guy looks at me on like the like second to last street and he's like, aces are bad in this game. And I just look at the other guy, I was like, can we please chop this pie? He's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice yeah. yeah. I feel like the mixed game people, I don't know, there's some, some where it's a camaraderie and they'll do that and then yeah. some where they're like, got you, bitch. But the print player pool is so small, they like probably lean towards helping you to get you to come back. Versus I, I think it's more of that because like, <laughs> I love them like as a whole, but like everyone thinks they're the best player in the game, which is something that like I miss a little bit in like two card. Yeah. There's so many times where I show up to like you know a full game, I'm like I might be the third, fourth, fifth, sixth best player, but everyone at mixed game table is like everyone else fucking sucks. Yeah. I'm the best player. <laughs> Fuck these guys. I'm gonna take advantage of them like all day. Yep. Was, <laughs> and it's, it's so cool to like you know that that bravado is is kind of nice. Yeah. Like, I, I mean serious like. Because well, I remember when I used to feel that way about, like, two-card as well. I don't know. And everyone... So, like, everyone has a game, like, all right, I'm the best of this game, or I'm the best of these two games. And then the games that they're not the best at, they're like, oh, I'm not that bad, but they probably don't know how bad... Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know how bad I am at a lot of those games, so, like, I can't yeah, even imagine... the top four. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody says, if you put, like, a little poll up, <laughs> are you the top four in this game? Like, eight of them are like, yes. <laughs> but you only play, like, seven hands of those, so, like, you don't get to realize... Yeah. You know, like exactly, yeah. Like you can be a goldfish and just like go to the other end of the bowl and be like, oh, that I didn't lose that much money. I'm not <laughs> that bad. It's not here. that big a deal. <laughs> and then an hour and a half later, it comes around again, and the same thing happens. You're like, oh, I only lost a bet and a half. That's fine. Like, <laughs> yep, <laughs> definitely. Mm. So that's been fun learning those. <laughs> there's, there's learning new stuff in poker is uh, I don't know, a little zest of life. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah, it really is. I, I just like learning in general. I like I really like reading and I really like learning. So if you combine that with like poker, which is one of the most fun things I think you can do, then and you must like teaching too because you got a teaching tool that you have on the market, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's the uh, share it with the people? Let's do some. We we're gonna call this the. Uh, I heard this on another podcast and I liked it. The thrill of the shill. This is uh, <laughs> Jesse's gonna tell you. <laughs> Jesse's gonna tell you his product, and it's gonna be shameless plug. He's going to tell you what he sells or what he's what he's promoting, and uh, you're going to buy it. And go. <laughs> right there. Well, first of all, I just want to say, like, if it rhymes, it's got to be correct. So I like to throw it. There you go. For sure. No, Flotimals, uh, we created the company a couple of years ago. It's a, um, it's a learning tool. It basically, we have um, solved all of the pre-flop ranges of poker. And uh, you can, there's a... You can essentially use our navigation tools to look at any situation preflop, and it'll tell you you put in what happened at the table, and it'll spit out what range you should play and how you should play it. Like what a computer would do. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So if so and so plays this way, maybe you want to shift how you play to accommodate that or to, to exploit it, right? But um, if all things are equal and everyone's playing like perfect poker or whatever, yeah. then you would want to play uh, in this way, and then you can figure out your own deviations from there. But like my, I always think of poker more, studying poker, or at least no limit these days, more like how chess players go about studying chess. Like the game's more or less been solved to an extent, but no one will ever 
learn all of it because it's such a vast, deep game. Like the game tree is massive and everything's going on. And um, so it's more about looking at different situations, seeing the starting point, how you want to address it, and then thinking about how you would deviate from there or whatever. So this is like if a computer was playing against a computer, you have that information like yeah. readily available. And then you can see like how you should play. And then you can maybe say like, well, I think this guy is playing like way worse than this, but at least I know like what I should do if he was playing perfect. Yeah, and then also like perfect is, for pre-flop poker, perfect is not that hard to be too close, like to be a fairly close to, right? So like in a cash game, for instance, yeah, some people will open a little bit lighter than what they're supposed to in theory, right? Um, <laughs> Some people open a lot later. <laughs> but like you'd be surprised. Like you can you can get in there with a lot of hands, right? So for like especially if you have an ante in there, like you can get in there with a lot of hands. Like some people are far too tight. Like people that you think are playing reasonably loose are like too tight. So uh, so even if they're a lot looser or like uh, what ends up being not that much looser, uh, it ends up being pretty close. So like your response doesn't want to be that far off of like what the computer's response would be. Okay. That makes sense. And it, what was the name of it again? Floptimal. Floptimal. And you go to where to, to look at it? Floptimal.com. Floptimal.com. Cool that wasn't about, taken? That's crazy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so one, one suggestion I would make, in our game, we play the seven deuce game, where you get a bounty of, uh, you get a bounty of two big blinds every time you win with seven deuce, mm -hmm. and the last guy to fold has to pay you four big blinds. So maybe there can be a version of Floptimal with the seven deuce game. That would probably be the first of its kind on the market. I think that's a great idea, honestly. Put a yeah. little deviation in there for, for private games where they play the seven deuce game because a lot of them do. That's because... a really good idea. I think it'd be really hard to figure out. I also think that uh, the fact that it'd be really hard to figure out how to solve it makes it um, a great game to have, right? That's like right. I think you, you guys are really good at this in your game um, and other people are getting smart about this, but I think that introducing games that aren't easily solvable or whatever, that add different elements where people have to go back to like poker. instincts and <laughs> poker and execute, like, you know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff is like just the best possible thing to do. Um, and yeah, I, I, I really appreciate when games have that kind of stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. sometimes you gotta zig when they're zagging, you know, if, yeah. if people are solving it, then you just add a little twist. You got the seven deuce game, you got the stand up game, you got uh whatever, we were introducing one that we haven't actually played yet, but we, we really want to do called the King's Bounty, yeah. where, where uh, what, what, what did we decide on? You, uh, if you win a hand with King 3, King with a Crown, uh, oh, nice. automatic, yeah. automatic stand-up game triggers, King doesn't have to stand up. He sits down. He's not good. He's not oh, good. that's cool. And he gets, he and gets a hand, bounty. Every hand that people are still standing, they have to pay him some penalty, like a tax. Oh my God! So from, the so from the peasants, from the peasants. So you're just you just have to play King Three essentially. It's you like have so to play it. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, even if it's just like whatever, a, a, a quarter of a big small, blind, a half a big blind, whatever. Blind. Yeah. It could be just it like, be nothing. everyone gives you a quarter. You yeah, know? but you're just like, getting uh, residuals. Just, yeah, yeah, exactly. You just, ridiculous. You just sit there Passive and, and like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. One of our players, uh, Paul, actually bought like a crown and a scepter, and like you, you're supposed to put it on, and like every time, like you know. People pay you money. Give me money. Give me, Give me money. money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you still standing? <laughs> Maybe. Do you say that? Because I, I kind of want to like, we, Honestly, we haven't played it yet. We have the crown. It's going we to have taken some pictures. <laughs> but like every time we think about playing it, there's someone in the game where we're like, let's not piss him let's off. Let's not piss this guy <laughs> off. He doesn't even like want to play the regular stand up game. <laughs> he barely <laughs> wants to play Seven Deuce oh, game. Man. Well, you guys give me a call when you introduce that. I want to play that game so bad. Yeah, you were saying you were gonna maybe vlog some hands or something at yeah, some yeah, point. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll get Jesse in for this for the King's Bounty game. We should just promote it. Just have a King's Bounty game. Just set the lineup of like people that are in for the idea. And yeah, just, yeah, yeah. And just like repeat it. Like you just like constant. Constant, constant King's Bounty. Yeah, yeah, just have it ongoing. No breaks. Because then you have like essentially an ongoing stand-up game that isn't. You don't know when it's gonna happen again, sure. but it's probably gonna happen soon. Yeah, exactly. It's that, suited or offsuit for King Three, right? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. So no, no. Far. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> over, but like, I, I would guess it's just like King Three across yeah, the board. King Three, yeah. and then I mean, this is gonna happen a lot. Well, I mean, that's the point. I yeah, like, yeah. I honestly think that's the point. And then there's gonna be plenty of points where I mean, similar to Seven Deuce, where you're just like, uh, he either has the nuts or he has King Three here. 
fuck, what do I do? And there's some private games that we've heard of where they they play constant stand-up game where it's like perpetual, like you can you can stack up like multiple bounties. And I think this is kind of like a fine balance between Exactly, the two, yeah. Like, like, no one gets too hurt. Like a lot. Yeah. But like you're not getting like you're getting beat for like, you know, shekels basically. Yeah. But yeah. still it's, it's more about the pain. Yeah, and it's more about just promoting like playing loose and like yeah. fun. Well, it's also like uh, it might be shekels for the people paying out, but like for the guy collecting, for the king. it starts adding up. You know? <laughs> He's getting eight shekels in a row. That's right. You should probably just nice. put that stack to the side. It's like I've made four hundred twenty-five dollars from you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Pay me more. At the end of the game, you have to like go go buy something at one of the overpriced casinos. Oh my shops. gosh, <laughs> that'd be pretty good. That'd be nuts. Yeah, so we don't have solutions for that. <laughs> so, but to your point, like. That's why uh, side games and private games exist. It's like it's a it's just a fun thing to kind of equal the playing field a bit, which is I think fantastic. Like it's, yeah, there's no reason why like the best player should always just win. Yeah, for sure. There should be some fuckery about. <laughs> That's why I always like Potlum and Omaha so much is because that is kind of like an equalizer. Where like, uh, for instance, if you get if you're you know if you don't play that much poker and you get buried in no limit, like it's hard to get out. Yeah, right? That's very fair. But in PLO, like. You can five bet whatever hand and have like forty percent. You know, you can get on buried if you if you go for it. Has Len been coaching you? Because he has told me this exact same thing. He loses a big pot, it's like set over set and no limit, and he's like, Now I'm just down. Yeah. If I was in PLO, I could make a straight. Yeah. It's true. I'm not making a straight and no limit. Ever. It's fine. it's really hard to make a straight. Yeah, no, you're right. Any game where it runs a little bit closer is is better for yeah. gambling for sure. But, but also I, those games like just adding that is like huge for the same same reasoning. Yeah, essentially. everybody right. has like more hands that they're playing. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. or just sure. um, like you said, like it levels the playing field because it's not like somebody can go home and like look up how to play King Three. Yeah, <laughs> you, can, you can go home and like think up some ideas or whatever, but yeah. like but you know, you're, something. Yeah. yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna run some Sims and come back and be like the world's brainiest. <laughs> King three player, that's I'm the world's sure. brainiest king three bounty player. Yeah. Imagine someone just comes to the table and all go the crown and a scepter in their hand. I'm like, I'm here for the king three, please. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> Jungle Man might do that, to be honest. Jungle Man, like, not yeah, only would he pay the guy, not only would he find the, the guy that he can pay to write a script to solve King 3, but he would also wear <laughs> the stuff afterwards. So. Game of gold, here are some ideas for your final round. <laughs> <laughs> Who will be the king? <laughs> I like it. That's pretty good. That's the best game I've heard of in a long time. Yeah, well, we're always working. There's a bunch of idiots in our game trying to think up shit. You know, mon monkeys throw shit at the wall, and then eventually something stinks. Everyone yells at him for how dumb it is until one, one of the monkeys like, I kind of like that, actually. <laughs> and the other monkey's like, huh? <laughs> They'll start doing their monkey hand yeah. chant. Yeah, yeah. Been there. That's about right. That's, that's literally our game. <laughs> nice. Monkeys throwing shit at the wall. That's about right. All right. Any anything else? What, where else can we can we follow Jesse Sylvia to? Uh, I don't know. What else should we um, shill? I don't know. So uh, Ashley and I are talking about Ashley's. Trying, well, she was. She's essentially trying to take a break from poker, and she's been vlogging with a decent amount of success. Um, I was. I was saying, competition. Poker, what, what is she exactly. vlogging? Is she taking uh, a break? No. Is it, well, is it poker vlogging. Or is yeah, it? she's been vlogging. Um, she's killing it. She has like thirty thousand subscribers, and she. Um, she was vlogging for like the last couple of years. Damn, we should get Ashley in here. Not yes, kidding. I know you should. Wow, what, this was a we got fight. the wrong <laughs> Sylvia. I'm not even. I'm not even being at all funny. <laughs> She's not waiting in the car, is she? <laughs> Can we cancel this whole. <laughs> no, but she's been talking about taking a step back from poker itself. Yeah. And so obviously she can't make poker content as much, but um, she wanted. We, we've been talking about her potentially doing something around me, and um, I wanted to do like a challenge this year of like. I hate like monetary challenges, but like set a monetary amount that I go after. So you're um, doing like poker related stuff, and then she's vlogging it, or what do you mean? Like, like she you? would, she would, uh, she would make like vlogs about like me playing or whatever, yeah. and me like um, trying to achieve like a yearly goal. Okay. And uh, just like my like day to day. So, so the grind like, along the way. Yeah, like exactly. The, yeah. Okay, I like that. Yeah, that will be great if you end up doing that. Uh, yeah, I'll let you know. For sure. I'll, I'll, I'll update, update the, the details, details and. Put a link in. <laughs> or we could actually extend this and have four people in here. I mean, yeah, 
more of a courtesy for him because we don't want him actually in here. I'll we sit in the chair over there like, and you right. can have like the camera occasionally. <laughs> it's like slow fade. We'll what are you guys camera. talking about? <laughs> no, it's oh, you're in. Don't you. worry. You're in the <laughs> shot. <laughs> you're in the <laughs> shot. <laughs> but no, like, just look at Ashley. Not in the shot. Don't worry. Yeah. If you guys end up doing that though, that's a good idea. And like maybe halfway through, quarter way through, if you guys are uh, g- gaining traction, yeah. get on here. Like you're tell welcome. us about yeah, the. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but I was I was saying because you you were originally saying that about uh, filming in the game I was like I could definitely like put stuff on that if it's doing well like yeah hundred percent yeah it'd be cool yeah we had Brad Owen in there one time and he did a little mm-hmm. table one this vlog. thing was great I saw that. Yeah, yeah, it was Hawk really nice right? yeah. like I don't know at least a third of our followers maybe ninety percent of them are because of that vlog <laughs> honestly it's probably true <laughs> somewhere in that range I don't know between one and ninety nine <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we tried, tried to get him today, today but uh, he was playing a tournament, so we can only get Jesse. Sorry, guys. Well, yeah. <laughs> I texted Ashley too, but she's she's she's, she's not she hasn't returned my phone calls in a while. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Sorry, I don't know her at all, really. Um, I bought some pieces in some tournaments, Ashley. I think you've made me money, so good job. <laughs> You have. You've done well on buying pieces of her, actually. Yeah, I think so. so. In the past, yeah. yeah. Any big tournament, I'm always happy to buy a piece of uh, the Sylvia family. <laughs> oh, shoot. We gotta... She just thought, she just got second in the ladies' event at the win. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. That was she huge. Wasn't selling, she, she wasn't selling, selling publicly for that. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but, yeah, she, she was, like, literally... We, we go to Massachusetts for the summer. She's talking about, you know, I want to take a break from really playing a lot of poker and stuff. We get back, she's like, oh, I'll play the ladies' event. I think... It was like 450 people. She got second. That's, That's pretty great. sweet, yeah. Congrats, Ashley. Yeah. Maybe I should take some off. She's the best. What did you say? I said, maybe I should take some time off. <laughs> <laughs> or at least maybe I should pretend to quit. Just put out in the universe. <laughs> or and maybe, then, some, maybe some pigtails. And uh, D- Justina. Justina Young can maybe do well in the ladies' night. Come on, uh, Justina. It only cost me 10x. <laughs> yeah, 10x buy-in. You could do it. I will say this. Uh, I dark. have only done well in tournaments where I am, I like could take it or leave it, or I'm thinking about doing something else. Like uh, the main, I was thinking about doing something else um, before I won Borgata. I was like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start like actually like de-escalating playing poker and get into something else, so I'm not distracted by poker. And then, oh yeah, my friend told me to come to New York and <laughs> play Borgata. And, yeah, I feel like when you when you don't care, that's like always when it happens. Yeah, I. I think it's a, a double-edged sword a little bit. Like, I don't know. Like, when I super care and, like, super focused, I tend to do well. And when on the other side, like, I also do well on those. But, like, everything yeah. in between is kind of dust. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, my best results are, like, I wasn't planning on playing today. Yep. That's, that's, too, yeah. <laughs> that's what I do the best. Not that I didn't want to play. I just, like, I was, like, had something else to do, and I was going to do it. And then that disappeared. And then I'm, like... Well, I guess I'll just play poker. Yeah. My brain is empty right now. I'll go play, and it, it just works. Oh, dude, I had one year where I, I, I actually stayed up, like, most of the night drinking with Vanessa uh, and some other people, but with Vanessa, and I had to do an interview at, like, 8 or 9 in the morning for a documentary that they were doing about Vanessa. Okay. And so I'm, like, I show up. I'm, like, real hungover and everything. I do the doc, like, I do the interview, um, and then I, it's, like, now later in the day, and I'm, like... Like, well, what's going on at the World Series today? And it's a 3K. And I show up and I play, like, the most ABC, like, boring poker you've ever seen because I'm just, like, I can't do anything out of line because I'll, I'll do something terrible. And I end up getting third in the tournament. Holy shit. Yeah. And I was just, like, like that, that's always me. Like, whenever I'm, like, it feels like I'm not dialed in or whatever. Or like, I'm not. I'm, like, oh, I guess I'll play this tournament today. That's, like, if. And then whenever I'm like, I'm in grind mode, I'm working really hard, I'm going to study. Ow, ow, just, ow, yeah, ow. I, just, I just suck, dude. It's the worst. Dude, I don't know. There must be something to that because I feel the same energy for, yeah. for, for me. I have friends who like, they only do well when their back's against the wall and they need it. And I'm like, I only do well if, I, if I'm like, I could take it or leave it. Like, I, I'm, I'm in a happy place in life. I don't mind if I bust out of this tournament. The yeah. dealer's like, you can't lose a hand. Here you go. <laughs> but I, I definitely understand your side of it. And like, I've seen people who, they can do that. It's, it's, it's a fine edge, that's for sure. Yeah. But, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, like, a, a few of our podcasts have been about, uh, like, a couple times when, like, I'm almost broke or basically broke and, like, just, like, fighting for, like, a yeah, year straight. Yeah, the back against the wall kind of guy. He's a, he's a 5K to a million in a year type of guy. He fucking... 
<laughs> me and you, when we don't want to play, we win. But Justin, uh, Justin might be one of those other types of guys. A little scrappy, scrappy chihuahua in the corner. Turns <laughs> into a lion. <laughs> well, when I'm like that, though, I, I like, I do. I mean, I I'll like push it and play a ton of hours of cash games. Like whenever, whenever I've been in that spot historically, and like that'll do all right. But in tournaments, like I can't get anything going. It feels like when I need to. No, you get something going in tournaments. It's got to run good, you know? Like, yeah, I, I, like, believe me, it's not like I was like, oh, I played so much better, and that's why yeah, I, yeah. my ROI went from like 10% to fucking 40%. And that's, that's not why. It's just. What you need is worse bankroll management. Yeah. That, there just, you go. Uh, that's right. If you got 10 buy ins for the tournament, you might as well put yourself in and four of your friends, you know? Is that what you did? No. <laughs> no, but not too far off. There yeah, if you, if, if you. If, if, Put your money in bad, like you know, ten percent equity a bunch of times. You're just due, and then you just go play a tournament, and you're like, oh, here, here comes all the equity. Finally, <laughs> like, like, all this equity's coming in. <laughs> yeah, just I just put like ten out of his fifteen k in play in a cash game, and uh, got felted by uh, Dan Bilzerian. That's how that's how his run started. He went from fifteen to five, to sitting at a slot machine, staring into the abyss, and then. Uh, that's sick. And then all of a sudden, he made a gajillion. That was the year he uh, came second to Chino in the uh, five diamond. Uh, was that the twenty five k? That was fifteen at the time. But yeah. How much did you win in that? Uh, the the actual prize pool, like uh, second place, technically was like nine fifty or something like that. Uh, obviously, he sold some pieces here and there, but like I, th- I think I took home around like I don't know. 700 something like that sick year though yeah but like i mean like like, i I was up probably around like 250 like before that too like going to the year like i so again like anyone wants to like hear this go back watch the first one but i told art this is absolutely true say it again (laughs) so i would uh venetian had like obviously a string of tournaments in in february like every single year i I actually almost all year long all all year long but like the terms between like 200 and like 600 buy-ins i would show up early and I would play, uh, I had $5,000 to my name, or not to my name, but like before I went back and got a real job. And I would sit down at a blackjack table and I would have a stop loss of $100. If I lost 100 I would just, you know, tuck my tail and like go play the tournament. And if I, uh, the goal was to win the buy-in of the tournament. So I'd either lose 100 or I'd win 200 300 400 whatever yeah. the buy-in was. And I think I played like 18 tournaments and I think I didn't get to the free roll part maybe twice. It was just like, I'd show up, I'm like, all right, here to get my buy-in. Quarter, win, quarter, win, quarter, win. What's the buy-in? 200? All right, keep going, keep going. All right, $200. All right, see you later. And I would just go play the tournament, and like, I think I cashed like maybe five of the 18 or something like that, including like a win for like 40K or something like that. And wow. Like, <laughs> and you're saying for a quarter every time? Like, I mean, yeah, basically. Like, That's I mean, there, there was a few times where I hit my $100 stop loss, and I was like, okay, well, now this $500 tournament is now $600. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. No, not, not a big deal or whatever, but like Sick. I did it for like an entire month, and like I, just, I, there's no skill involved. Like it was just pure gamble and pure bullshit that like I made up on my mind of things that should happen in the universe, and it just fucking worked out. <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah, I remember when I first moved to Vegas, me and Mike would go gambling occasionally, and I was running very hot gambling. And so when Black Friday happened, cashed all my money out of stars. Um, and I started playing bigger, but I had run up from playing like five ten and gamble at like winning a little bit of gambling. I had uh, run up a little bit of a roll, so I just played with that and I ended up running up that. So I never really had to uh, like pull money out of the bank technically, but like if I had to, I would have obviously. Mm. Um, so Mike likes to lovingly always say that I built my bankroll playing craps, <laughs> and that's like how he, yeah, kind of similar energy. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, anywhere else they can follow Jesse Sylvia and uh, and increase your following. Or more by... importantly, Ashley Sylvia. Or Ashley. <laughs> I'm sure Ashley's doing just fine on her own. Where can they follow Jesse? Twitter, Instagram. Uh, sure, Instagram. Instagram, Instagram is Instagram. your, your Jesse James Four. The, the number four. four. Yeah. Four, four Jesse, Jesse James Four. Yeah. All right. You, you guys heard him. Friends. You just uh, follow him there, and then you know he'll be your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> he'll probably stake you. If you just follow him there, if you like and subscribe our stuff. No more, no more backing. I'm out of backing. He's lying. I'll convince him to stake you. <laughs> He's backing me right now, actually. Sorry. <laughs> all right. First of all. Hey, me and my buddy, we make it all of this money. Yeah, I know it's rude to be bragging. They never catching a slack. Me and my buddy.